Welcome to The Mountain Gardener with your host, Ken Lane. Gardening can be challenging, but with Ken's tips, tricks, and local advice, you'll reap huge rewards. Now welcome your host, Ken Lane. And welcome to this week's edition of The Mountain Gardener, your host, Ken Lane, here every week talking about the landscapes of northern Arizona. And it's the second week in 2021, and already I feel better. So it just, it seems like things are coming along. My gardens, I'm not going to talk about anything that went on this week or last year. I don't want to mention any of the issues. It seems like it's, everything's ramping up. I think all of us just need to take a breath and garden more. We just got to get out, get some fresh air, watch a hummingbird, watch Watch the robins are thick in my gardens right now. They are all over the place. They winter here, and then they fly north later, another month. So I've got another two months with literally flocks of of red-breasted robins. It's so fun pecking around looking for, for worms. They're just entertaining. They've got some water in the backyard, water in the front yard. They just kind of hang out and... They're there pecking around in the leaf litter and and just enjoying the gardens. I am getting, I think I'm ahead this year than I was last year in my garden. So I've got the pruning pretty well done. I, I've got my roses to do yet, especially the big Cecil Bruner, uh, Cecil Bruner roses. They're kind of an old-fashioned big shrub or, or rambling or climbing rose. Um, using those as a property line border between my neighbor and I. They're just big. They screen. They're beautiful. They're they're just low care. Uh, so I, I've got to prune those, but I'm going to wait for another at least another month, May, month and a half if I can if I can wait that long. I don't know. I really want to get out there and do stuff. It seems like spring is early this year. Uh, the weather is warmer than normal for northern Arizona. It is, there's, unfortunately, there hasn't been much moisture either. We had that one little skiff of snow, what was that, just after Christmas, was that two weeks ago, something like that, Uh, but it didn't amount to much. What those kinds of weather events do for us in northern Arizona is it prevents the landscape from drying out as fast. It doesn't really add moisture. It doesn't hydrate your plants, those big spruce, pine, firs, even roses, lilacs. It doesn't hydrate them, which they do need moisture through winter. What it does, it keeps them from drying out any further. And so if you have not watered your landscape this winter, let's say we turned off our our drip systems, our irrigation systems back in November, and you haven't watered for two, two and a half months, your plants are dry. And you're at risk of having what we call winter burn or winter kill. That's where the tips of the of your red tip photinia, the very the the buds that are on the very tips of your lilacs, forsythia, rhododendrons, camellias, uh, they, they can suffer damage if they're allowed to go dry and we get a cold night. And it's down in the twenties every night. And so we're, it's not just a frost, it's freezing every night. And so those plants freeze every single night. If they get dry, what will happen is they don't have enough antifreeze up and down the structure in the buds, those flower buds, to protect them, to keep them from being damaged. And so you'll get the tops of that euonymus hedge or uh, cotoneaster hedge or juniper hedge. They'll get brown tips on them at the very, very top edge. And so those are all indications that that plant went into a freezing night and didn't have enough moisture to keep the antifreeze flowing up and down the structure of that, that particular shrub. This is important for fruit trees. It's important for your shade trees. You've taken 10 years to grow this big shade tree up, and now it's finally, it's, it's doing what you wanted. And to have some branches die back simply because it was we had a real dry winter, and that night, it just comes down. The damage is done pretty quick. It doesn't take much as soon as it gets dry. And so I, I would say go out and hand water, especially those things that are, let's say, planted last summer and fall. Because their root structure, they don't, they're don't. they not reaching out into the surrounding soil as far. At, let's say a mature Arizona cypress, this big old juniper-looking type of evergreen shrub. Those things are really robust. They've got roots that go... 20, 30 yards out, 
they've got more capacity, more fudge factor. A brand new plant, yes, they sent out some roots. They might have gone out six, seven, eight inches, but it's still not going to, still not at its mature length of, of roots underneath that ground. They'll go out two, three, four feet before they actually are really established. That can take up to two seasons. And so those kinds of plants, let's say you put a new maple tree, a new aspen, or a new a fruit tree, a rose out there last summer or fall, it would be important. It would, it would be a good garden practice to take a hand, just take the hose out there. I know it's only 50 degrees and it's chilly to you and I, but it's not to the plant. The ground is not frozen. It'll still take in that moisture that you give it, even with a hose. What I do is I'll actually turn on my irrigation system. I've got it insulated well enough where I don't have a backflow preventer that's exposed to the outdoor air. It's underground. All the valves are underground. All the lines are just underneath the surface. And then I've got some, some drain valves that help it, help it get rid of that moisture when the valve is not on. And so it doesn't freeze in the winter. I'm watering every couple of weeks right now, uh, but I don't ever power down my irrigation system. I keep it active year-round. Uh, for me, I've, I've got a big bag of, of soil, potting soil. I use a lot of potting soil. And so I just buy that in the fall, and I throw it on top of my valves, my irrigation valves and in, in, that are buried in the ground. You'll see this plastic box that's go, covering these this valve or manifold is what we call it in the ground well sometimes if it gets real cold it can permeate underneath that plastic lid and 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 kind of freeze some of those valves that's an expensive repair if that thing breaks if it freezes the water in that valve expands and then breaks open the man the, the diaphragms that are inside that valve and that's that's a very expensive fix it'll cost you easily hundred dollars probably you you won't get out of that for under three four hundred bucks plumber bill and so you don't want that to freeze and so i just throw a bag of potting soil whatever i'm going to use next spring i put that on top and i've never had a valve freeze even sub-zero winters you folks at the higher elevation it still won't freeze for me so that's kind of a little trick but you can manually reach down underneath that plastic lid and you can manually turn each one of those valves on, even without your digital clock. There's a little cock valve, uh, either the entire solenoid, that big electrical 12-volt on-off valve. Sometimes those will turn. It depends on the maker. Or sometimes I have a little tiny cock valve, about no more than a half an inch in size. Usually it's got a Phillips head um, receiving a way to turn it if you want. And so you can easily turn it by hand, usually, and just turn it on. Now, the problem with that is you're used to automation. If you've got this automated uh, in-ground irrigation system, you, you're used to uh, having it turn off itself. It won't turn off. If you do this, uh, turn it on by hand, you have to turn it off by hand. So it's usually counterclockwise turns it on, clockwise turns it off. It just turns off the water, just like that. Uh, but it would behoove you to irrigate your landscape, especially things that are fairly young. I would say under two years old or, or younger, it, they would really benefit from some moisture. I am seeing a lot of bud swell on the trees. The fruit trees have fruit flower buds forming up and down the stems. I was even looking at my mums, you know, chrysanthemums. Uh, they were in full bloom last fall. Well, they've died back, and so they've just been this spiky kind of dead thing in the gardens. I mean, they don't look that appealing right now, but they had some structure. They've got that straw color. It gives me something to look at than just bare garden soil. But when you look underneath that, they are already starting to emerge from the ground and starting to grow. It's, it's, we got two months before spring hits, but they are already, it's so warm, they are actively starting to emerge from the ground. And mums are kind of that way. They, they start out early. Uh, they, they like the the chill of spring. They like that cold night and bright days. In fact, if you cut back your perennial mums right now, it would expose them to sun. They would grow even faster. It's a great time to be pruning, great time to be watering your landscape. Have a lot in store for you. We've got Lisa Waters Lane coming in with your garden questions after this. 
You've been listening to The Mountain Gardener with Ken Lane, owner of Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Join him every week for timely garden advice right for the gardens. Visit Ken where he can be found throughout the week at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. As the days get longer and brighter, houseplants can struggle and scorch, but we have the solution. At Waters, we've organized our houseplants from A to Z for the brightest of sunny locations, many even bloom. With experts that know plants and how to make them grow. Shipments of the freshest houseplants in town have just arrived from A to Z and ready for a bright new home. Waters Garden Center, where people who love bright green houseplants, they love to shop, found in Prescott. Hi, Lisa with the Plants of the Week and our Goshiki Holly. Goshiki translates from Japanese as holly with five colors. Its new leaves emerge red, then turn green. The entire top of this holly is draped in colors of cream, white, gray, yellow, and green. This evergreen makes the perfect accent, hedge, or evergreen container for its all-round good looks. A really nice plant that shines through winter is just $39. Waters Garden Center, where people who love Japanese gardens, they love to shop. You've been listening to Ken Lane, the Mountain Gardener. Green thumbs learned while working in the Family Garden Center. Now welcome back to the Mountain Gardener. And we are back with Lisa Waters Lane in the studio. She comes each week with your garden questions. Just what are your neighbors talking about? So welcome to the nursery, Lisa. Oh, well, thank you. It's good to be at the nursery. Finally. Been off for like, <laughs> for seems like forever. I was, what, about a week? Week and a half, maybe, a half, if you yeah. count Christmas Eve and all that. The staff yeah. worked really hard, and we had a mm-hmm. great 2020. Yeah. And they were, they just have done, they're almost heroic. So our staff, we could not run it. This is not a mom and pop. Mm -mm. Mom and pop runs it with a great crew. It's a family environment. Mm -hmm. We like coming to work. But last year was hard. And so we just said, hey, take Christmas to New Year's off. Enjoy time with family and friends. And that's what they did. So we closed the store for a week. And then... New Year's landed on a weird day, like Friday, and then yeah. we could open Saturday, but we're open, we're closed on Sundays <laughs> through February, so we just close it through, and we opened up this week Monday. Yeah, and it's, it's just kind of. Nice. I was ready to come back to work. Oh, I was. I, I was, like working. I was exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> you watch all the grandkids. Yeah. Yeah, we had all the kids and grandkids, and it was a hoot and holler. But boy, you forget. How much energy it takes. Yeah, it's, it's, that's not a young man or woman's game. No. They're kids. That, that's like, no. uh, I like it for short term. I, I kind of have that young grandfather yeah. energy, but uh, it's it's finite. <laughs> it does burn out. It's like burning the candles at both ends and in the middle all at yeah. once. And they're still going, let's do it again, pups. <laughs> now, the, their parents went off for a few days to Sedona to celebrate their 10-year wedding anniversary. Yeah. Congratulations to them. But so we watched the kids for, what, four days, yeah, I think? Yeah, long time. So it'd been a while since I had to think about, oh, I have to cook breakfast. Oh, I have to prepare lunch. Oh, what are we doing for dinner? Uh-huh. It's bath time. <laughs> Luckily, the garden center was closed. Mm-hmm. So we just brought them over with the dogs. and We right. s- used the parking lot to skateboard and rollerblade and, and scooter and play ball. And I gave all the grandkids a, a radio and they mm-hmm. could go hide and seek. And it was a hide and seek was, was fun. Two acres of plants it and was displays. A yeah. Ooh, they and had, I, they... I'm pretty sure I won the best hider award yeah, no doubt. in oh hide and seek. That's because you're such a cute little thin thing. <laughs> you could yeah. fit in any hole. <laughs> My goodness, who could look down there? We're not see... A big man's not looking down in that. In that hiding place, even the dogs walked yeah, by me. I didn't know it was it was a really good spot to hide. <laughs> Two acres in a retailer, retail garden center. Yeah. Hide and seek. They'd get done and go. Can we do it again next <laughs> tomorrow? Can we come back tomorrow? It's great. It was a hoot. So we this should be about gardening. So we're sure. like a third the segment in. Are there any great questions? I'm sure we've got pent up demand happening. What's going on? I think so. Well, we do have some questions, as a matter of fact. So David is in Prescott. He noticed his fruit trees are already starting yeah. to set some buds. <laughs> he wants to know, did he miss that opportunity to prune? Yeah. And the second part of his question is he heard you talk about horticultural oil yeah. and he and didn't really listen to what you said. Well, and uh, wants Dave, to know <laughs> what, what are you doing to me here? You're killing me. When does he spray it? <laughs> <laughs> and why should he spray yeah. it? Yeah. 
So, okay, so is it too late to prune because your buds are swelling? The buds are swelling. Spring's mm-hmm. going to hit early. It's a mild winter, and, and, and the, it's still cold out, so mm-hmm. freezes, but the sap is swelling faster than it normally would. What we really need is a we need to go down to, like, 19 for for a week and then that'll kind of slow everything down into stasis with a with a snowstorm or rainstorm afterwards that'd be great that would be nice yes that'll slow things out but in the interim uh, roses the buds are swelling it's okay wait to prune your roses you'll want them to be starting to leaf out when you prune them Mm -hmm. same with with the fruit trees it's okay to have them uh, the buds swelling leaf buds and flower buds both are swelling it's okay to prune them while that is happening. The sap, it's still winter, still goes down into the 20s every night. That sap is not flowing very slowly. And so go ahead. You've got until the end of end of February, I would say get it done. Usually we say to the until mid-March, but mm-hmm. I would say end of February, if you can, sooner rather than, than later, uh, get your pruning done. Mm-hmm. So that's get those crossing branches out of the middle of the tree. Take off those broken branches, diseased branches, things that are cracked, things that are growing to the ground. Get rid of the suckers. All those things you do with fruit trees, which we've, we can do a whole show on just that. Mm-hmm. Uh, get that done. Pick a nice day, which every day is nice right now. Seems like it. Take right. your time. Now the horticultural oil thing. Mm-hmm. There's two things we're going to cover there. One, uh, horticultural oil. You spray that when you're done pruning. So that can be February, March, first part of April. But really, you should do it before they leaf and before they bud out. So you spray the entire yard, really. And so what you're doing is is a heavy-grade oil, and so it coats the eggs, and it coats the insects that are still there. They're slowly working around the yard, too, just... It's so cold, they can't move very quick. They're still there, though. Mm -hmm. So you spray everything down from a couple angles. I mean, this is where quantity is better than quality. You need just spray everything. Hose and sprayer. Hose it till it's dripping wet. And then uh, you're killing off the eggs and the bugs. that are. So you're starting clean. It's like Mm -hmm. cleansing things. And it's organic. It's safe. It's safe for the birds. It's safe for you. It's it's an oil. So, So that's why you're doing that. Lastly. The, the question that often comes, not, not this time, but often, I'm sure some listeners are going, well, Ken, talk about pruning paint. Yeah. Should I prune the trunk white? Should I prune those big limbs, that, that scab, that opening, that cut? Should I paint it with that dark black tarry paint? Um, there's two schools of thought. Here's my thought. I kind of take the middle ground. Pruning in the winter, the benefit is you don't have to paint that black tarry paint on cuts because the sap's not flowing if you're to wait till march april you would Mm -hmm. because the the insects are out the sap is flowing but by pruning now you don't have to skip that step Um, and then painting uh, uh, painting the trunk white why do they do that for fruit trees well on the south side of a fruit tree that uh, as trees are young the bark is thin so it's not insulating the the inside of the tree very well and so what will happen is on the south side of the tree often you'll find a crack that will form from the base up to about where the the main branches start to the crown starts to come out um, you're painting that white so that the sun is reflected. That's the only reason. And keeps the inside of that tree cool. We want it to stay as cold as possible for as long as possible. What happens on the south side, the sap will wake up because the sun is so warm. It'll start to flow. And then it freezes that night. And then it cracks. That, that, that sap that was flowing starts to expand. It cracks. And you'll get this crack up and down the side. It's called sun scald. Mm-hmm. That's the reason you paint the, paint, the, the trees white after you're done pruning mm-hmm. when it's all done. And that's no, more for than just fruit trees because oh, yeah. maples, yeah, absolutely. a lot of the trees do yeah. that. On the that fruit trees side. are famous for it. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I do maple. I do anything that's younger with a real thin bark. It helps it. Okay. All right. Well, we covered that topic to death. Yeah, too much. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, too much good, info. Good information. Uh, Marty has a neighbor that has a ton of horse and rabbit poop. Wants to know, can she use it in her raised beds as long as it's well-aged? Well-aged, absolutely great stuff. Oh, my gosh. Uh, Check for grubs. Sometimes manure piles that are older, they they have this really big white worm that loves hanging out in there. It's warm. It's rich. 
And they love, once you transplant them into your garden, if they come in with that manure, mm -hmm. uh, they love eating the roots of your tomatoes and your cabbage and your flower zinnias. So just check that. You'll see them when you start digging around in it. But the more, the merrier. Mm -hmm. That horse poop and rabbit poop. Rabbit poop's great. Chicken poop, great. Turkey poop, great stuff. <laughs> so that's why we mix ours. In, we call it barnyard manure. Right. You got a blend of things mm -hmm. in there because you get this cross. Each manure has a little bit different micronutrients, that kind of stuff. So yeah. absolutely use it. Just check for the grubs. You don't want to introduce that. So that's what the composting, if it's well aged, mm -hmm. it should have heated up, killed all those eggs. They should have come and gone and you shouldn't have any more issues so, so how long do you think well aged is, is usually a, a season. year usually a year okay. yeah you'll leave it in a pile and you'll probably turn it a couple times so when we had farm settings mm -hmm. huge piles of, of compost we'd add the the pig poop and the i guess you shouldn't do that but we did <laughs> horse poop the goat poop all that stuff we turn it mm -hmm. and that a couple times in a year and then you go use it in flower beds it was like magic magic juice that made it all go that's all we got for this segment. Ken and Lisa Lane, The Mountain Garden, but we'll be right back. You're listening to Ken Lane, a.k.a. The Mountain Gardener. Ken can be found throughout the week in Prescott at Waters Garden Center. Listen each week as he answers timely garden questions unique to mountain gardens. Not everyone can grow wildflowers, but we'll make sure you're not one of them. At Waters, we know which wildflowers sprout, thrive, and bloom with success. We're wild about wildflowers with many of our own Arizona blends. Like our Arizona native mix, butterfly and hummingbird mixes, and all are big, bold, and beautiful. At Waters, we know wildflowers and winter's a season to spread new seed. Waters Garden Center, where people who love their flowers wild, they love to shop for seed. Hi, Lisa with the Plants of the Week and our Prescott Alberta Spruce. This perfectly shaped tree displays dense green needles which are as soft as a teddy bear. The perfect front yard Christmas tree for holiday lighting and oh, so beautiful when matched in pairs at the front door. Hand grown, these are perfectly shaped and sized for home accents and just $69. Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. Where people who love twinkly little Christmas trees, they love to shop. You've been listening to The Mountain Gardener with local expert Ken Lane. Join the conversation every week as he answers timely garden questions. Email Ken a question directly from your phone to his desktop through the web at watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Now welcome back your host, Ken Lane. Now something... I did this week. I've got, uh, I don't know where soil goes. It's a, it's a crazy thing. It just disappears. It doesn't blow away. Everyone blames it on the wind. Oh, I'm on the ridge lines. It just blows away. I'm telling you that the plants are using some of the soil to grow. They're taking the nutrients, the moistures out of that, and they're using it up. So soil will just slowly over time disappear. So I've got a, a thyme lawn, so a herbal thyme. It's an evergreen lawn. I mow it twice a year. That's it. But it looks good. The, the dogs love to roll in it. They smell good. They smell herbally when they get done. It doesn't spot too bad because of the dog urine, that kind of stuff. But it's just super low care. Creeping thyme um, is a, it's just a robust perennial. Perennial means permanent. It just comes back year after year. And so, and it spreads profusely. In fact, almost too well. I've got a, a patio that's right next to this lawn. So it's an actual, I don't know, entertainment patio. Fountains and you know shrubs and flowers and containers all around it. But sometimes that creeping thyme will throw seed off. That's good if it's in the right place. But when the seed comes up in between the pavers, that's more work for me. I don't really care for that as much. But I'm willing to weed the in between the cracks of the pavers every once in a while for really super hardy, easy to care for, ground covery kind of herbal plant, and that's creeping herb, creeping that time. And so that's okay. The soil's on either edge of that time. The time has held that soil up. So the level of that entire lawn, got gardens on either side, is kind of settled. So I took home a few bags of top soil and f raised the tops of those that garden bed or that lawn area 
uh, to make it look level, just to make it look better. Um, on top of the time, I actually threw some, I scraped real low, real light layer of barnyard manure. It's a deodorized manure that we make here at Waters. Put that on top. So that lawn, it is going to look really good. It hasn't started growing yet. But as soon as we hit a couple 60-degree days, which we're in the 50s now, boy, it'll take off with new growth. And so I'm setting the stage for spring. And time is one of those things that starts early in spring. I just want that lawn to look, I want new growth. Lawns look better with new growth, not old growth. So I'm trying to set the stage for that. Reset a few pavers. Here's the difference between all the soil types. You go up to that huge wall at the box store of different soils, and it is crazy confusing. I mean, which one? They're all labeled uniquely. They're all trying to position in the marketplace. This is the, you can only get this planter, azalea, flowering shrub, raised bed, container mix, only from them. So they're trying, to, they're trying to niche their products, but really there's really only four products when you look at all the soils. There's manure. There's different grades of manure or ages of manure. I mean, the cheapest parts, they're just steer manure. It's kind of gooey. It comes right out of the rear end, and they put it in a bag, and you take it home and go, I'm going to spread this around. Not the nicest thing to throw in the back of your luxury car that you just got for Christmas or any car for that matter, not a nice product to actually put your hands into because it's gooey, stinky, gross, and sticky. It just, it's, it's, it's steer manure. We've got a barnyard manure, which is aged pretty much an extra year. So you get rid of all the stink and it's composted down better. So it actually feels like mulch, like compost. You couldn't even tell it's manure really, but it's got a lot more nitrogen in it. It's great for those things you want to get started early in spring with some great new green foliage, lawns, vegetable gardens, flower beds. That's what manure is for. Then you've got top soil. Top soil is, um, it's basically compost with a lot of sand. It's a very heavy product. You can hardly pick up the bag, but it's made to top dress holes in the yard. So it's meant to be heavy so it won't blow away. It's not really meant to plant in because it's too heavy sometimes. You wouldn't want to fill up a container with topsoil then plant in it. It's just too heavy. It's, it stay gooey and wet and that you get root rot. But it's made to fill in. I, need, I was digging a new tree and I ran into a boulder and now I don't have enough soil. Topsoil. That's what you use for that. The next one is just basic mulch or compost. For you folks in the Midwest, you, you call mulch, you know, like wood chips. You throw on top of the ground. You're like, that, that's not what I'm talking about. That's bark. Uh, where I'm talking about composted material. It's got a dark, rich, black, brown, earthy color to it. That's mulch. It's made to add an, to add to your native earth because it's so heavy and keep it from, from compacting back down around the roots. So it's made to amend to, for trees and shrubs. Really, what, that's what it's for. Uh, it, it, the worms like it. It starts to rejuve, rejuvenate that soil around those that new root ball. And the last one is potting soil. Potting soil is where the science is. Usually potting soil is more expensive because it, there's, it's actually an ingredient. It's, it's a recipe. There's lots of insp expensive ingredients in there like peat moss. It's expensive. It's coming from Canada. Uh, perlite. So it's those white specks that go in there. It keeps the soil... Uh, so that it breathes and aerates, yet stays moist. A good potting soil is made for pots and raised beds. It's made to fill up a container and plant directly into it. We also call it our grower's mix. So we make our own potting soil. We've got our own recipe. Our grower developed it over years. We've been perfecting that recipe so it grows plants better at this elevation, the mountains of Arizona, in your gardens or raised beds. That's the four types of soil you'll find at any garden center or any rack of, of soils. That's it. So you've got manure, topsoil, mulch, potting soil. Be right back. The Mountain Gardener, your source for timely garden advice right for higher elevations. Guaranteed to make a difference in your yard this season. My living room feels so empty. Now that the Christmas tree is gone, the house just seems so blah. Brighten it up with a big, bold, beautiful plant from Waters Garden Center. 
Fill that cavernous space with tall tropicals, colossal cactus, and sizable succulents that bring the great outdoors indoors. Make a gorgeous green space you can enjoy all year, not just for a season. Unique, exclusive, one-of-a-kind houseplants found only at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Gardening and you don't know where to start? Waters In-Home Garden Service comes to you and identifies what you have and how to make it better. Design advice, water strategies, vegetable and flower gardens, soil and food needs, and problem solving. Always problem solving. You'll instantly be a better gardener. All for just $200 of expert time with a coupon to fill your garden dreams without ever leaving home. In-home garden consultations from Waters Garden Center. We can be at your home this week. You're listening to The Mountain Gardener with local expert, Ken Lane. Mountain gardening is very rewarding, with a few of Ken's tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts sure to turn your thumbs even greener. Now welcome back to The Mountain Gardener. And we are back with Lisa Waters Lane in the studio. She comes each week and just shares her garden knowledge. So we don't have one, you know, like garden guy on here going you should t- you should grow tomatoes like this we get a different perspective that's a, a right more feminine perspective a better per- <laughs> my favorite gal in all the world my most admired gardener in my life is lisa oh well i Thanks, married dear. you 33 years ago i'd I like something about you more than just gardening <laughs> and you're cooking that's true <laughs> i do make a mean well, cookie i gotta tell you and a brownie. Mm-hmm. You're the ultimate baker. My goodness, boy, Christmas. My mouth's watering just thinking about it. <laughs> yeah. Well, good. Maybe I'll make some cookies. No. Maybe not. I don't know. Depends the weather's on... so nice. I, I want to be outside. You're, you're a fair. You're not a fair weather baker. You're a <laughs> snowing, rainy outside baker. Whenever that yes. happens, it's guaranteed the house is going to smell oh, yeah. like chocolate chip cookies. Definitely. It's so good. But when it's this beautiful out, I'd rather be working in the yard, gardening, hiking. hiking. Yep. You betcha. Well, this yeah. is all all yours. You got any garden insight well, for us? What's going on? And, and so I think we ought to let people know what we have been doing at the garden center. Oh, shh. Don't let the secret out. <laughs> why, why are you sharing that? Because a lot of people haven't been in. It hasn't been really the right season. Right. So they maybe haven't seen what we've been doing. Uh, but we have a big remodel going on. Yeah. More than just big. It's like the whole inside of the store is <laughs> gutted, redone. And mm-hmm. then it's it still looks torn up, but you can flow through it. You can see oh, yeah. it's kind of it's a working, it's a retail working construction project. <laughs> so uh, maybe watch for for tools. Don't trip on oh, them, my, but uh, yeah. it's still coming together. Our, our garage mm-hmm. doors are coming in. I think next week, so we'll hang oh. those four, five, five of them. However many there's five of them. Uh-huh. So lots there's of big, five. Yeah, the oh, whole wow. front of the store is going to mm-hmm. be. Not for security, but for uh, plant protection, okay. people protection, that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's all COVID driven. You yeah. know, keeping things We're safer, open, this, open air, air, air flow. Mm-hmm. It's way beyond CDC, but then it also makes you feel good because things sure. are fresh. Everything's new. Mm-hmm. Uh, the checkouts will all be new. The, the huge houseplant remodel. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So we took all the inside where the registers were. We have, what, three, four registers yeah. in there. And those are now all on the front patio, yeah. which is where the garage doors are going, open yeah. close. So that allowed us to take the whole inside of the store and basically make it a jungle. <laughs> Pretty much that's it, a jungle. Yeah. 3,500, 3,700 foot square foot jungle it's yeah. more space in your house ever dreamt of in a big house <laughs> of jungle <laughs> it's pretty it's pretty so we yeah. have just filled it with house plants yeah. and we've kind of changed the layout so we could get more house plants in there and tried to bring in more colors so we're trying to carry more orchids more yeah. african violets more cyclamen anthuriums um, so, you know, when you want that color in your home, we're going to have it for you to put into your home. Yeah. Uh, we also have a great selection of floor plants. So nice, yeah. big plants. So yeah. Dracaenas, um, i trying to think what else. We've got s- several varieties of Dracaenas, palms, maybe some palms. Yeah, yes, banana plants, all mm-hmm. kinds of stuff. So we yeah. went down and hand-picked a lot of these. You mm-hmm. said, ooh, that one looks... 
know, this is a greenhouse. It's acres. Right. We just went, oh, that's, ooh, we want that one. Put my name on that one. But bring it up next week. So it's right. that kind of thing. Hanging mm-hmm. baskets the same way. Right. Lots of hanging baskets. Mm-hmm. So the way we are setting it up is, is the goal is to, to allow people to shop with ease without yeah. having to ask a bunch of questions. So we kind of have it. This is our beginner section. Or yeah. if you think you have black thumbs, um, this is the section for you. These are plants you can't kill yeah. unless you're over water <laughs> so you know just really easy care plants and yeah. we have uh plants for dark rooms so sometimes you have a room that just doesn't get a lot of light into it so we have a section for that um plants for unusual things that people who really like to try new things and are, are fascinated by plants that they maybe haven't grown before uh, succulents and cactuses boy we really increase their space so they can really I love those because you can travel. You can have them in your yeah, house. It's true. You can go away for three or four weeks. Your plants don't care. <laughs> yeah, they're still they're happier they're when happier. you do that. Yeah, please, could you leave again? <laughs> it's kind of like the difference between cats and dogs. You would never right. leave a, a dog even oh, for an hour no. by itself. A cat? Yeah, yeah go ahead. <laughs> We'll see you when you get back. Make sure the food bowl's uh, <laughs> right. for, topped off. Uh-huh. <laughs> so that we've definitely increased that, and we bought a lot of pottery in. Yeah. So just trying to keep up with the colors. You know, it's hard to buy because you're always guessing colors. Yeah. You know, you always go, "Oh, What's Pantone trending? said yellow is the." Color. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, mm, I don't know about that in pottery, but we we've brought a really nice selections, um, everything from white and black to. All colors of the rainbow, teals, greens, reds, oxblood reds, you name it. Huge selection of orchid pots mm-hmm. and African violet pots. Right. So we, we kind of specialize in those. So you got to have the soil. It's a separate, special kind of pot, special kind of soil. There's just a way to treat those. And so mm-hmm. if you've got, if you had some of those and you don't know how to grow them, come talk to us. We'll show you how to grow an orchid, how to get it to rebloom, how to have mm-hmm. an African violet bloom multiple times for you in a year because it just might need a little bit more space. So mm-hmm. absolutely. Yeah. So we do have the soils. We have the cactus succulent mix. Uh, we have orchid bark and orchid mix. We have African violet mix. Mm-hmm. And cactus. we have cactus. Yeah, I said I said that already. Oh, I'm sorry. I wasn't listening. listening I wasn't listening to you. It's only been 33 years. <laughs> At 35 years of marriage, I'll, I'll start listening. I that detailed. That. I really don't think so. <laughs> yeah. um, plus, just great potting soils. We have yeah. our own potting soil, and we also carry some happy frog in a little bit smaller size, but just great potting soils, which if you're going to transplant any plant, you want a good potting soil. Yeah. You know, we should mention that too. There's two types of houseplants out there, mm-hmm. and you'll find... There's some real cheap ones, yeah. and those are usually grown in Florida, mm-hmm. outside in, in, in ranges, and they're very cheap. They grow very fast in Florida, and then they'll put them on a truck, ship them to a big warehouse or box or whatever, mm-hmm. and they put them on the floor, and they look good for a week or two. Yeah. But they're so cheap, you just kind of go, oh, i got to have me one of those. But the second you put it inside your house, it's not happy. The second you give it our mountain water, it's <laughs> not happy. The second you, you you do any kind of difference, now you're heating it, just got, it's just got – they fail mm-hmm. so prolifically. It's just, it's terrible. Yeah. You don't really want a Florida plant grown outdoors and put it inside your house. You, you wonder why maybe you haven't been as successful. That's why. Mm-hmm. What you want is a locally grown house plant that's grown in greenhouses. So it's using our same water. That's the key. It's using our same uh, sunlight. It's used to our environment. And mm-hmm. then it's brought into the nursery and sold. And, and you'll find it's a totally different way mm-hmm. Of success, it used, it, our plants were noted as they're a little bit more expensive, but boy, do they they live to the plant. Mm-hmm. So your success rate. We're not selling plants; we're selling garden success, garden experiences. That's right. truly what we're after, mm-hmm. and that's why we go hand pick some of these things. Mm-hmm. That's you'll see those two types. Same with blooming things. Mm-hmm. Some like cyclamen. Some cyclamen are grown outdoors. And they they do well, and then as soon as you bring it indoors and use it as a decorative thing on a on an end table or something, they they fade. You really want one that's grown in a greenhouse, so now it can come in. And it's used to indoor environments. It's, it's used to that type, and so your success will go up. Oh, definitely. So on and on and on. I could go on and on about that one. Oh, Just that's and- where growers are not doing the gardener right sometimes, or, or the retailer, retailer. Who's, who's buying from the wrong grower. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's not doing the right doing gardeners right and the other thing i would say is when our house plants come in we take care of our yeah, house plants yeah. we make sure they're watered we make sure there's no pests in them 
Uh, we make sure they're healthy and well rooted out, so that you know when you when you get it at a box store, it comes in. Go ahead, it looks, name them. You want not, me? I can no, go down the list. No, no, no. Please let me I'm let me let you. me go no. on my soapbox. Okay. You get going. And yeah. Can't shut you up. <laughs> um, but they get them in. I don't guarantee you. They have nobody that comes through yeah, and waters them. They have nobody that goes through and makes sure that there is no pests on those houseplants. Because there are some things you do not want to bring into your home. Yeah. Uh, mealybug, aphids, fungus gnats. I mean, all that stuff. You just don't want to bring it into your house. Yeah. That's one I just helped a customer. She has black gnats flying around mm-hmm. her house plants. That's fungus gnats. Right. It's gotten really bad. She finally put it outside and we just told her, you know, that's it's so infested. Just throw it away. <laughs> For what? 20, 20 bucks you can have a new one. Why how are you I can sell you this fancy thing that'll mm-hmm. but that plant will, is suffering so bad. It, it got let go so long. Mm-hmm. I think it was a plant that came in from the outside and just infected yeah. and got out of control. Mm-hmm. Great. Thank you, Lisa. We are out of time. Ken and Lisa Lane and the Mountain Gardeners who camp out here at Waters Garden. Come visit. Be right back. Look for more tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts through Ken's website. Podcast the show, read his weekly garden column, or follow him on Facebook and Instagram at watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. <laughs> Did you know that plants can help you sleep better naturally? At Waters Garden Center, we have beautiful houseplants that not only look great, they clean the air we breathe. Get this. Some plants can actually produce oxygen at night and even take mold spores out of the air, making for less tossing and turning and more beauty sleep. Don't lose sleep. Rise and shine with unique, gorgeous houseplants for your best rest yet at Waters Garden Center. Sweet dreams. Hi, Waters with this week's Plant of the Week. Our true blue Fat Albert Spruce. At just 15 feet, this is the ideal evergreen for small gardens. Excellent in front yards with limited space. The color is so blue all year long with the perfect evergreen shape and just $74. Dense, durable, and loves the sun, so it works well as a windbreak, screen, or sound barrier and only found at... Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott, for people who love the perfect blue spruce, love to shop. Welcome to the Mountain Gardener with Ken Lane. Gardening in the mountains is different. Listen to Ken's tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts guaranteed to make your gardens more beautiful than ever this year. Now for better advice that works locally, welcome your host, Ken Lane. All right, so at the bottom of the hour... I was explaining the four types of basic soil, bagged soils you're going to find as amendments that you can add to your gardens. I have started some brand new garden beds, and here's my recipe. Here's what I do to prepare a new garden bed for, let's say, roses or flowers or perennials or wildflowers, whatever it is, vegetables. Here's the approach. So I mentioned there were four types of of products. There was manure. This is nitrogen-rich, composted, kind of earthy. It's, it's poop in a bag. Some of it stinks. Some of it doesn't. Some of it's nice to work with. Some of it isn't. But it's basically a nitrogen source you're adding to your soils. There's topsoil, which is a heavy mix. It's compost, not manure. It's composted wood products, typically. So we're harvesting our, comp- our uh, compost from an old sawmill in Taylor, Arizona. The bottom of that huge pile of wood tailing sawdust is kind of gritty it's got more humic material but it's basically compost but we're getting some of that sandy kind of products at the bottom it's much heavier twice the weight of let's say a a compost or mulch premium mulch and so that's made to fill in holes uh, to add to so but not made to plant directly into it's just too heavy then you had Mulch, compost, we just explained that. That's composted material. It looks rich and dark, and it's made to add to soil to keep it from compacting back down, to allow roots to penetrate through the soil faster, deeper, stronger, and encourages mycorrhizal colonies and worms to come back in and, and start to work with the plant in the soil, help it to root out better. And the last one was potting soil. This is an ingredient. It's a recipe that's made to plant directly into in fact, if you're planting tomatoes 
you want to put a in, in containers, let's say, or raised bed. Or what I tell folks, if you're getting your gardens ready, have the top layer of that garden be just regular waters potting soil because that's our growers mix. If you put a tomato in this waters potting mix, it'll never know it's in different kind of soil. It would just, it'll just go, oh, more soil, more places to grow. I'm just going to grow here. So I try to have the top section of my gardens be, be our growers mix. Basically, we call it potting soil. Those are the four mixes, manure, topsoil, uh, mulch, and potting soil. So what I did for my gardens is I mainly put manure on top. I actually took a few bags, broken bags. I mean, I own all of them, so I might as well use up the broken bags, right? I'm just trying to get more organic matter in that soil. It's the organics that disappear. It's the organics and mycorrhizal colonies are, are eating and using. The worms are eating and using. The plants are eating and using the, the organic organics in your soil. So you want to add some of that every year to your gardens. Um, if you didn't do anything last year, you might have seen that Maybe production wasn't quite as good. Your tomatoes weren't quite as large. You didn't get as many pumpkins or zucchinis or cucumbers or whatever. So adding some more organics, mulch, or I had some broken bags of mulch, and mainly manure, uh, barnyard manure. It's a deodorized manure. I put a two-inch layer over this entire bed, and then I turned it one shovel's depth. Now, this is a brand-new garden bed. So I had a bunch of roses there. They were getting old. I pulled them out. I just dug them right out, threw them away. If you don't perform in my gardens, if you're ugly, you better be aware. Cause I'll give you a chance for a year, but after that, you are you are out of there. I'm not. I'm I'm ruthless with ugliness in my gardens. You're, I'm not going to stand for it. So they they came out. I pulled out eight roses, and now I'm preparing those beds. And I found out why they were suffering. I dug about. One shovel's depth, about a half a shovel depth. This is a big commercial grade fiberglass steel shovel. Got about halfway down the blade, and then I hit, boom, hard pan. Oh, my God. It was hard as rock. It wasn't rock. It was soil, but it was hard as rock. I could not. I'm a big man. I jumped on that sucker, and it would not go through that. It would just slip and slide underneath that. And so I'm going to have to go and double dig that bed again, but I went, I got as far down as I can. I think I'm going to wait to the next storm system and then add an actual sprinkler and get it moist. I'm actually going to moisten that thing down so that I get that manure and mulch, that, that organic material down into that hard pan so that it keeps that hard, that hard soil from compacting back together so the roots can get down further into the soil. But for now, it was too much work. I wasn't going to work that hard. I got it turned once, and I'll turn it again when, once it gets moistened. Um, while you're at it, while you're turning those organics, and every year you're adding a two-inch layer. The book says two to three-inch layer to, uh, turned into the soil to one shovel's depth, or about eight inches. That's what the book says. Now, in northern Arizona, you have no nutritional value in your soil. So if your lilacs are blooming great three years ago and all of a sudden they aren't blooming as well, or the flowers are smaller, or your roses have lost their fragrance or their, their brightness, that's usually a nutrient level. It's used up the nutrients that you put in there, the fertilizers in the soil, and now they've run out. And so they start, they show the symptoms by just not blooming as much. They're not as bright. They're not as fragrant. Those are all indications. It's, la it's starving to death. While you're preparing a new garden, make sure you're adding to that garden some nutrients. So for me, before I turned in those that two-inch layer of organics, the manure mainly, um, I added a fertilizer. I added soil, um, humic, H-U-M-I-C. It's a humic acid. And I added soil sulfur. Those three things I added to that garden bed, in addition to the, 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 the organic wood, composted wood products or manures. Okay, so I'm trying, to, I'm trying to rich that soil so when I start planting, things will just go, whoa, this is great. Hey, let's grow, let's grow better here. So you see your production go up much better. Your flowers are much larger, much more of them, much more fragrance, much brighter. That's the, so you need to put nutrients and you've got to put some organics 
manures mainly this time of year. Now, this bed is going to be so rich when I get done that you don't want to just do all this and then plant directly into it. It's too hot. It's too nutritionally uh, juiced. And so I want that that bed to sit idle for about a month or two. I want a storm or snow system to come in. I want it to come in and permeate through that those layers that I've now created of nutrient-rich, organically loaded soils so that when I do plant, usually March 1, start sometime in March, it's going to be nice, and I'll start planting like crazy. I mean, I'll just, that whole bed will be planted out March 1, if not into February. So I'm kind of trying to, I want this thing to sit for at least a month before I start planting to neutralize or balance out all those nutrients. And so once again, here's my recipe. I put down, you must, if, you're, if you're driving right now, pull over, get a pen and paper out because you're going to need this. Or I guess you could just tune into the podcast later and re-listen, but if, what, we're about eight minutes in. So here's the recipe. Two inch layer of really manure is ideal or some sort of organic material. Not wood chips. It's got to be composted. Don't put fresh manure. Don't use fresh leaves. Don't use fresh hay, fresh straw, fresh. You want it composted. Uh, Otherwise, it does some negative stuff that happens. You want it composted, okay? Turn down to one shovel's depth. Before you turn it, add some fertilizer. I put, for this bed, I brought home a bag of fruit and vegetable food. It's an organic pelletized food I put together years ago. It's great fertilizer for getting getting beds ready. In addition to that, I put a bag of humic, H-U-M-I-C, it's, it's humic acid. Humic acid promotes faster root growth, deeper roots. It, it stimulates, tickles the feet of plants so they want to root out. That's what humic acid does. Well, that's what I want with a new, new flower bed. That's what I want. Um, and then I also put in some soil sulfur, Sulfur lowers the pH and makes, just make, it counteracts our water that we have. It's so difficult to work with. So soil sulfur, humic, uh, a fertilizer. I, I use an organic fertilizer, the fruit and vegetable food. You could use all-purpose food. And then a two-inch layer of manure turned one shovel's depth as evenly as you can. Let it set for a, for a month. Start planting like crazy, and you will have one of the best gardens you've had in years for that recipe. You're listening to local garden expert Ken Lane, the owner of Waters Garden Center. He can be found throughout the week at Waters Garden Center, located in Prescott, 1815 Iron Springs Road. Thanks for tuning in to The Mountain Gardener. Spring is the best time to be outdoors, garden, and create a personal oasis in your yard. If you don't know where to start, Waters Personal Garden Service allows you to book an hour of one-on-one time with an expert without the crowds. It's easy by phone or through our website. No lines, no waiting. Purchase a $200 gift card and we'll line you up with one of Waters' private gardeners. You're going to love your yard again. Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott or at watersgardencenter.com. Let's talk poop. Hey, I'm Tommy at Waters Garden Center. Ken and Lisa are out right now, so I snuck in to remind you that it's time to add some manure to your garden. It's been a wet winter, and your soil is, well, pooped. Waters Barnyard Manure adds nutrients to get your garden growing. It's organic and odorless, so we really can say our poop don't stink. Buy six bags or more. They're only $5.99. Now that's a load of crap. Tommy, what's going on? Oh, poop, gotta go. Natural, safe, odorless, and organic at Waters Garden Center. You've tuned in to The Mountain Gardener with local garden expert Ken Lane. Join him each week as he answers timely garden questions that are sure to make a difference in your gardens. Now welcome your host, Ken Lane. So we are in a complete remodel mode here at the Garden Center right now. The whole thing's almost embarrassing when I talk to friends or clients are coming in, guests coming in, gardeners. And we've got, we're totally moving all the registers. So it gets too busy, too crowded with COVID going on. We want to space the lines out so it's easier to social distance and safe for the staff, safer for gardeners, just safer. And so it takes a while to get all the parts. So we got garage doors coming in to help control flows. It's just a mess. The beautiful thing is all those registers are now outdoors under the greenhouses, more fresh air. So where they were indoors, 
It's now all houseplants. And so we've had two truckloads, three truckloads. I can't keep track. There's so many houseplants. I can't. There's just so many of them. And so it's exciting to see, you know, polished floors and new paint and rearrange things, re-merchandise, set up new departments. It's just fun to see a whole new succulent uh, cacti display, a new, you know, blooming, sun-loving, just different kinds of different ways to approach a whole new department. And we gave them 3,500 square feet. It's the most, it's the biggest houseplant display you'll find anywhere in northern Arizona, I I think, at least in Prescott or the Central Highlands area. It's just fun to see all the new plants. Spring is starting to be here. We're starting to actually push the orders up because spring feels like it's going to be early. Well, normally we start packing the garden center about March 1. We're thinking that may be too late if people want a garden. If the weather's nice, if things are starting to, if the daffodils are in bloom and we don't have our spring load coming in, we'll be late to the party basically. And it's dangerous for the plants. They need when they start swelling, the buds start swelling. You want them to be here at the garden center so they wake up on our time frame. They wake up when all the other lilacs, when all the other. Uh, forsythias and crocus and, and uh, uh, quince and all the other plants bloom at the same time. You want them blooming when, when our plants, the rest of the neighborhood blooms. And so if they're tricked into coming out early or late because you shipped them early or late, that's not good. And so we're starting to figure out how to fill those trucks up so we can start rolling them. They'll be here, oh, in just two, three weeks. We'll start filling the garden center up. It takes a while to fill a garden center, two acres of plants. I don't know how many semis that is, but that's 10, 15 semi-tractor trailer loads of plants. That's a lot of plants. It's a lot of work, but it's just fun to see. It's just what we live for. It's what, what the garden center lives for. We start our garden classes this week, next weekend. So January 16th, let me pull up the website here. Let's see, January, go to Waters Garden Center, hold with me. There we go, classes. So watersgardencenter.com, there's a classes button on the front page. We start next week, the 16th. So Saturdays at 9.30, we'll have free garden classes. We're going to hold them in person in the back greenhouse. It's a huge greenhouse. Plenty of room to space so everyone feels safe. Bring a face mask. It's encouraged heavily. I'll have mine on. And the first class is going to be healthy, happy houseplants, just because we filled up the garden center with houseplants. After that, the 23rd, the next Saturday... Is top landscapes with flair. If you're wondering what to do with a, with a garden, how to design it, we'll go over how to design, how to put plants together. Here's what looks good. Here's, here's the different types. Okay. Then the last uh, Saturday, January 30th, is why January is the month to plant wildflowers. We'll go over what kind of wildflowers, how to do it, what to look for, what to expect. So everything to do about wildflowers, come to that one. It should be a hoot. So garden classes start Saturdays at 9.30, starting next week. Join us. Check it out at watersgardencenter.com. You're listening to local garden expert Ken Lane, the owner of Waters Garden Center. He can be found throughout the week at Waters Garden Center, located in Prescott, 1815 Iron Springs Road. Thanks for tuning in to The Mountain Gardener. Not everyone can grow wildflowers, but we'll make sure you're not one of them. At Waters, we know which wildflowers sprout, thrive, and bloom with success. We're wild about wildflowers with many of our own Arizona blends. Like our Arizona native mix, butterfly and hummingbird mixes, and all are big, bold, and beautiful. At Waters, we know wildflowers, and winter's a season to spread new seed. Waters Garden Center, where people who love their flowers wild, they love to shop for seed. As the days get longer and brighter, houseplants can struggle and scorch, but we have the solution. At Waters, we've organized our houseplants from A to Z for the brightest of sunny locations, many even bloom. With experts that know plants and how to make them grow. Shipments of the freshest houseplants in town have just arrived from A to Z and ready for a bright new home. Waters Garden Center where people who love bright green houseplants, they love to shop, found in Prescott.
If you want a more fruitful garden, increase success in your landscape that just feels better, then tune in every week to The Mountain Gardener. Years of tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts are guaranteed to make your gardens nicer than ever. Listen to this podcast or read Ken's weekly garden column by visiting watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Thanks for tuning in.